sobre eh, eh, el mejo chatan de lebejota ingesum de riachon da hamalindo el lobo hosen de le mihatande el eten de le malush alahaskendo lipan de lo roski melihite y mazum mazin de mehe y vazaze se le hezonda la ha y colojo soto rejes que me le he mi father we give you all the glory we give you all the praise we adore you we adore you yes lord you are great yes you are none can be compared unto you father we bless your name Isaiah 56 verse number 7 anchor scripture less in le mehelu shale mahaska elomale ne mehe solo maha Father, we bless your name. We adore you. Yes, you are. Father, great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Not can be compared unto you. Great and mercies are you. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Oh, amen. Welcome you to this last day edition of prayer. It is the last day of the month of July. And we know that every pain, every sorrow, every hurt in your life is ending today in the name of jesus welcome you to destiny empowerment chapel international where winners are born lives are built and transformed into the name of our father in glory amen i would like you to stay put we are about to start the first service and i know god is going to favor you in jesus mighty name if you're online you can share the broadcast and i know god will favor every one of us watching in jesus mighty name we pray we commenced with prayer the month of July, and we are wrapping up with prayer, and we'll see what God has for us in the month of August. I would like to teach on what I call the necessity of prayer. Repeat to me and say the necessity of prayer. Uh, we've been talking about prayer, and I want you to know that indeed God has something great for us. And every time we are talking about prayer, you should know that there is a revival coming into your life, not only in your spirituality, but also in your physicality, your career-wise, and every area of your life. I would like us to see the scripture in Azar 56, verse number 7. Then we continue from there. Azar 56, verse number 7, the Bible said, Even them will I bring to my holy mountain." And make them joyful in my house of prayer. He said, I'll make them what? Joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offering and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar. For my house shall be called the house of prayer. Shall they say the house of prayer? So it is in the place of prayer you can find joy. It is in the place of the temple and sacrifice you can possess what God has for you. And you shall be a joyful person in the name of Jesus. Now, by means of introduction, I would like you to know that there are four major assignments given to us by God to all believers as an assignment or responsibility which can rightly be called minor or commandment of God of, for importance. Shall we say amen? So the four responsibilities of a believer is what I'm about to give to you. Then we go deep into the teachings. The first responsibility of a believer is prayer. Man of God, take us to first Luke chapter 18 verse number 1. The first responsibility of a believer is prayer. The Bible said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse number 17, it says, Pray without season. The Bible said in Luke 18 verse number 1, he said, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought to always pray and not what? Faint. So the first responsibility of a believer is what? Prayer. I'm giving you four important responsibilities of a believer. In Matthew chapter 4 verse number 4, the Bible said, And Jesus answered and said, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. We must read the Bible every day. You see the scripture on the screen. We must read the Bible and meditate upon it regularly. Because in Joshua chapter 1 verse number 8, he said, If you meditate upon this word day and night, what do you have? You have good success. 
So in the place of meditation and prayer, you are secured what I call a good success in your life. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse number 20 to verse number 22, I'm still talking about the first responsibility of a believer is prayer. Proverbs chapter 4, verse number 20 to 22, the Bible said, My son, attend to my words, incline thy ear unto my saying. He says what? Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart, for they are life unto those that find them, and health unto all flesh. So, if you keep the word of God, and you pray with it, and you are having an active prayer life, you should know that you are fulfilling what we call the commandment of God and the promises of God. Shall we say amen? The second responsibility of a believer is to study the word of God. What I call Bible studies. And this is where many Christians miss it. Because we are not ready to study the word, but we are ready to flow into prophecy. We are not ready to know what God is saying from the scriptures, but we are ready to dance into a lot of things. That is what is causing problems. Because many of you are wanting to catch bigger revelations without understanding the basics of what God is saying. So somebody will say, um, um, you need a father to go higher. If you don't understand what scriptures is talking about fatherhood, you might not understand that revelation. And at the end of it, maybe if your father does something and you are offended, you see that you get angry and leave the church. You didn't understand the craps of that word. Shout and say amen. So the second responsibility of, of a father or of a believer is to study the word of God. Shout and say amen. Joshua chapter 1 verse number 8, we saw that. He said we should meditate upon the word day and night. Proverbs chapter 4 verse number 20, we just read. He says, incline thy ears unto what the Lord is saying. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse number 15, he says, steady to show yourself what? A proof. Shout and say amen. The second major assignment is given to God or is given to us by God is to steady and understand the word of God. The third assignment of a believer is given to God is given to the believers to service the kingdom of God. Shall we say amen? When the third assignment of a believer, one, is prayer. Number two is what? The study of the word of God. And number three is service. Shall we say service? Everyone must do something in the house of God. Everyone must do something for God. All of us without exemption must voluntarily do or release ourselves for the service of God with the body of Christ. Let's see Psalm 100 verse number 2, man of God. And Galatians 5, 13. Psalm 100 verse number 2 says, Serve the Lord with what? Gladness. Come before his presence with what? Singing. So as a believer of God, you must have something you are doing for God. Galatians 5, 13. The Bible said, For brethren, ye have called unto me liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. So it's the responsibility of a believer, number one, to pray, number two, to study the word of God, number three, to what? Serve the kingdom of God. Do something for God. Shout and say, I'll do something great for the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, you are not talking to me, you are talking to God. Say, I will do something to God. I'll do something for God as well. Shout and say, Amen. The fourth assignment of a believer is to engage in soul winning. I'm going somewhere. I'll come to the prayer. Don't worry. I'll define prayer and we continue. But I'm giving you four responsibilities. Number one is what? Prayer. Number two is what? Steady the word of God. Number three is what? Service to God. And number four is what? Soul winning. Man of God, Mark chapter 16, verse number 15. We know that scripture very well. Service to God, you can't express your love for God if you are not winning souls for God. So winning is a different topic on its own. You can't say you love God without winning souls. The Bible said, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Shout and say amen. You see, we've been saying win souls to God through your phone. Yes, it's another major point. But every individual you have an opportunity to meet in this life, you have the opportunity to engage in this life, you have a word for the person. So you need to engage the person with the word of God. If you don't know what to preach, you can preach testimony. 
God has done something for you. If you cannot even preach your own testimony, there are so many testimonies in the Bible. Do you know Jesus? No, I don't know Jesus. Do you know that Jesus can take away every pain from your life? You don't need to be a prophet to win souls to God. You can use the scripture to bring people to God. Shout and say amen. And when you are doing that, it's for your own advantage. Shout and say amen. He said, you have not chosen me, I have chosen you. That if you bear forth fruit, anything you ask the Father in my name, he's going to do it for you. So there is a blank check signed by the signatory of Jesus Christ that any time you win a soul to God, you have a mandate to ask God for anything and he must do it for you. It's constant. You don't understand why pastors are being blessed. Any time they win souls for God, anything they pray, God must do. You don't have to jealous a man of God. You can also be like that. Shout and say amen. So the fourth assignment of a believer is what? Soul winning. So what are the four assignments or responsibility of a believer? Number one, prayer. Number two, what? The study of the word of God. Number three, what? Service to God. And number four is what? Soul winning. And as we embark on this four journey, may God give you a testimony every time of your life in Jesus' mighty name. Shout a wonderful amen. Now what is prayer? When everything is going fine in your life, people don't usually see the need of prayer. When things are going on well in your life, we don't see the need to pray. But prayer is higher than just making God a Father Christmas. Prayer is making God like a supermarket. Where when you need something, you enter into the market and go and pick. God is more than that. Prayer is just not seeing God as a 25th December staff. Prayer is not seeing God as once in a month staff. There is more to prayer. Shout and say amen. What is prayer? Number one. Psalms 42 verse number one. Prayer is the panting and testing for this after the soul of God. Shout and say amen. Prayer is the panting and the testing of the soul after God. And the Bible said, as the heart panted after the waters broke, so panted my soul after thee. So it is a thirst, just like how when you don't, you don't take water after two hours, you feel some dryness in your throat. That is how the spirit of God is. You have to pray and engage God in prayer. It is the testing after the soul, after the soul of God. Shout and say amen. And may you test and long after God forever. Shout and say amen. Exodus 22, 23. What is prayer? Prayer is crying unto God. You don't wait when things are not going on well before you call unto God. Prayer is crying unto God. Exodus 22 verse number 23. The Bible said, If thou afflict them in any wise, and they cry at all unto me, I will surely hear that cry. That's, that's a scripture. He said, I will surely hear what your cry. Let me give a bonus scripture. Man of God, Numbers 14, 28. Let me show you something there. It is very imperative that we pray. It's very imperative that we talk to God. Numbers 14, 28. I love this scripture. He says, say unto them, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. You are here waiting for the man of God to come and prophesy. You are here waiting for me to say you are blessed before you know. He said, surely as I live, whatever you say into the ears of God, I will do it. So it is in the place of prayer that God can answer you. Say, Lord Jesus, answer me in the mind in the name of Jesus. Oh, what is prayer? Psalm 55 verse number 7. Prayer is pleading with God. Prayer is pleading with God. Psalm 55 verse number 17, the Bible said, Evening, 55 verse number 17. The Bible said, Evening and morning and at noon will I what? Pray and what? cry aloud and he shall hear my voice so prayer is not an occasional stuff as i'm saying it is an it's, it is a continuous stuff david was a man after god's own heart because he knew the value of prayer he prayed morning he prayed afternoon and he prayed in the evening what is prayer jeremiah 33 verse number three prayer is calling unto god Prayer is calling unto God. In times of need, in times of worry, in times of sorrow, the Bible said, call unto me and I will answer thee. 
He said, when you call unto me in prayer, I will answer you with answers and show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. May God answer you as you cry unto him in the name of Jesus. Oh, shout a wonderful amen. As you begin to pray, may God give you answers in the mighty name of Jesus. What is prayer? Prayer, Romans chapter 8 verse number 26. Prayer is groaning and traveling in the spirit. Prayer is groaning and traveling in the spirit. Likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for. There are times we come here, we don't know what to pray for. We don't know what to say. You've been praying, man of God, morning, afternoon, evening, I just don't know what to say. He said, for us we ought to. But the spirit itself maketh what? Intercession for us. With groaning which cannot be uttered. Listen to me. There are times you come to, time, uh, to church. You go somewhere. You don't know what to say in prayer. There are things you, you, your mouth cannot say. But you see, there is a burden in your spirit. That is where you start to pray in tongues. Then your spirit starts to intercede for you. You start to speak on your behalf. Anytime we are praying, then, let me show you something. You don't just wake up and speak tongues. Paul said, I speak tongues of angels. I speak tongues better than you. But it's, it won't help. If I stand here and I just start saying, Le malo, shatalabaha. I've not said anything. Prayer is the tongues you pray. It's like the drill you put in a wall. You first need to hammer a prayer point. Now, that is why the man of God will stand here and say, Say, oh Lord, as I begin to pray, any power, limiting my glory, die. Immediately you have hammered the prayer point. The tongues begins to drill that prayer point into the wall. It deals it into the spirit. You don't just wake up and speak in tongues. You must have a prayer point. Then when you are speaking in tongues, the devil cannot understand what you are saying, but God is understanding it. Then your spirit begins to speak things and mysteries unto God. Shout and say amen. amen. What is prayer? I've given about five definitions. Let me tell you why prayer is very important. Prayer as a commandment. Why we must pray. What is God saying? Listen to me. We are commanded to pray in several passages of the scripture. So the Bible said in Matthew chapter 6 verse number 6 that we are commanded to pray to our father in secret. When we are talking about prayer, it is a command, it's an instruction. And there are scriptures to show that. He said, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into your closet. And when you have shut the door, pray to your father which is in secret. And thy father which seeth in secret shall reward you openly. So Jesus is also speaking that prayer is very important. You need to pray. You need to go, talk to God. You have to talk to God in secret and he'll openly reward you. Shout and say amen. Why are we commanded to pray or the importance of prayer? We are supposed to pray or you pray for them that despisefully uses you. Luke chapter 6 verse number 28. It spoke about we praying for those that are despitefully using you. People who are your enemies, don't just sometimes kill them. Pray. The New Testament has brought deliverance. So anytime we are praying against certain things, you must also pray for their salvation. Luke chapter 6 verse number 28, the Bible said, Bless them that curses you. And pray for them which despitefully uses you. So prayer is very important. Now why do we have to pray the importance of prayer as a commandment? In Luke chapter 10, verse number 2, man of God, the Bible said, in Luke chapter 10, verse number 2, let's see what the Bible is saying. It said, therefore said unto him, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, I like that scripture, he said, pray ye therefore, that the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into the harvest, or into his harvest. Shall they say Amen. So the Bible commanded us to pray that the Lord of harvest should send forth laborers. In Matthew chapter 9 verse number 38, the Bible said, Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into the harvest. So scriptures have shown us countless times how we should pray and why we must pray and the need for prayer. So before there can be harvest in the kingdom of God, there must be a send forth of laborers. And before you can send forth laborers, there must be a place of prayer. Shout and say prayer. 
Why, why is the Bible commanding us to pray? Matthew chapter 26 verse number 41. The Bible said watch and pray. So that means prayer has been hammered several times. And it's very important why we need to pray. He said watch and pray that ye not enter into temptation. That the spirit is indeed willing but the flesh is weak. Why must we pray or why is the Bible commanding us to pray or where in scriptures can we see prayer? In James chapter 5 verse number 14. The Bible said pray for the sick. God emphasized on the word pray, 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 pray for the sick. The Bible said in James 5 14, it says, Is any sick among you? Let them call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Shall they say amen? Where in the Bible again did it talk about prayer? Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1. We need to pray for the leaders. You need to pray for your leader. It's very important. Many of you come to church just praying for yourself. You need to pray for your leader. See what the Bible is saying. It says, This know also that in the last days perilous times will come. Second Thessalonians 3, verse 1. Finally, brethren, that's what the Bible says. Pray for us. That the word of the Lord may have free course. That's what the Bible is saying. It said was, finally brethren, pray for us. That the word of the Lord may have free courses and be glorified. Even as it is with you. So it's an emphasis over there that pray for us. So you need to pray for we the pastors. You need to pray for the leaders. It's very important because if you don't pray for us, how can we have a free course to bring the word of revelation to you? Shall they say amen? May God give you the strength to pray for your leaders in the name of Jesus. Now, prayer is also mentioned for the leaders to pray for their followers. Second Thessalonians chapter 1 verse number 11. So it is our responsibility as leaders. We are fulfilling that bargain of the scripture. We are always traveling in prayers. We are always here praying, interceding and praying for you. So, as we saw that we must pray, or leaders must pray for the followers, it is also imperative and necessity that you as a follower will also pray, or we as a leader, we pray for you. Second Thessalonians chapter 1 verse number 11. The Bible said, Wherefore also we pray also for you. Are you seeing it over there? The Bible said, Wherefore also we pray for you always. For you, that our God would count you what worthy of his calling and fulfill all the good pleasures of his goodness and the work of faith with power. My God. So, wherefore also we pray always for you. Paul was speaking. We pray for you always. We are not leaving anything in unturned. Anytime you bring burden before us, it is our responsibility as ministers, it's our responsibility as leaders to pray for you. Just like how is your responsibility as a believer to pray for us. Shout and say amen. Before time beats us, I would like you to see certain things that will motivate you to pray. So I call them the motivators of prayer. Or prayer motivators. Shout and say prayer motivators. There are certain things that will engage a believer or that will push you into the realm of prayer. And these things is very needed in the life of everyone. There are times when we say, let's pray, you don't know what to do, but let me give you certain motivators that will engage you to pray. Number one, Matthew 17, verse number 21. The first thing that will motivate you to pray is fasting. Fasting is a motivator for you to pray. Jesus speaking, he said, how be it? This kind goeth not out by prayer and fasting. So there are certain things that will motivate prayer. They were praying, but you see the problem you are dealing with must come with fasting as well before it can go out. So the first motivator of prayer is fasting. So I say, Lord Jesus, I shall fast. Luke chapter 4 verse number 1 to verse number 3. We've heard of the scripture. Luke chapter 4 verse 1 to verse number 3, man of God. The Bible said, and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Jesus went to fast. Let's continue to verse number 3 and we jump to 14. He said, being 40 days tempted of the devil in, and in those days he did it nothing. Fasting. So it was the fasting that motivated Jesus to pray more. 
And when they were ended, he afterwards hungered. Let's go to number three and jump to 14. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the son of God, command the stones that it may be made what? Bread. Let's go to verse number 14. Now, I'm showing fasting as a motivator for you to pray. And Jesus returned what? In the power of the spirit into what? Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. Shout and say amen. This scripture, Luke 14, 4, 14, the unbelievers understand it and they are using it. You want to excel in your place of work, you must engage wonderful fast. I know of a man who came for repentance. He, because he wanted fame and power, he was sleeping at the graveyard at Osu. He was sleeping there for 90 days. Every night he's there. And he became very famous. You know him in Ghana. Shout and say amen. There are many people doing crazy things just to attain certain height. But we believers, when we tell you to fast, 30 days fasting, you didn't fast. And you expect a great miracle. It won't happen. Shout and say amen. Another thing that motivates you to pray is what I call importunity. Say the word, importunity. When we talk about an importunist, it is persistence to the point of annoyance. It is, I can worry Pastor Wisdom to the extent that you get very angry, I don't care. That is an opportunist. You must, you see, you must be like the woman who went to seek the unrighteous dead. Man of God, let's go to Luke chapter 18 verse number 1. Then we'll jump to verse number 8. Luke 18 verse number 1. We know the story. This woman went to the dead. said, avenge me of my case. Avenge me. And she spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought to always pray and not faint. Man of God, let's read. Let's go. Let's read all to eight. Let me show you the story. You must be like this woman. It will motivate you to pray because you know that you have to always worry God. You must always be talking. Saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. Let's go. He said, and there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him saying, avenge me of my adversaries. Avenge me of my adversaries. And he would not for a while. But afterwards, he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regards man. I, I like this. He said, yet because this will, widow troubleth me, I will avenge her. Lest by her continual coming, she worry me. She was worrying the man. Worrying the man. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. Let's go. We'll end at eight. I will tell you that and, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. I like number eight. He said, I tell you that he will avenge them what? Speedily. Nevertheless, when the son of man cometh, he or shall he find faith on the earth like this woman? Thank you, man of God. So, if you are an opportunist, listen to me, it's a motivator to pray. This woman was bothering this unrighteous judge. You must pray every time and worry God like that. You must worry God. God, you told me in your word that I must, the hand that does not work must not eat. God, I have been working. Why am I not seeing the fruit of my harvest? You must pray, pray, pray. Don't stop until God himself answers you. That shall be your lot in the name of Jesus. So I'm speaking about the motivators of prayer. Fasting is number one. Number two, I'd say you must be an opportunist or opportunity is also a form of uh, a motivator to pray. Number three, Holy Ghost baptism. Matthew chapter three, verse number 16. Man of God, open Matthew chapter 3, verse number 16, and we'll go to Zechariah chapter 10, verse number 12. The Bible said, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. You see, the Holy Ghost baptism will urge you to pray. When you are being baptized with the Holy Ghost, it is a form. You see, you can't receive the Holy Ghost baptism and say you will not pray. So the Holy Ghost baptism become a motivator for you to pray. So if you don't know what to pray, pray for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Zechariah chapter 10 verse number 12. Pray for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Let's see what Zechariah is saying. The Bible said, And I will strengthen them in the Lord, and they shall walk up and down in the name, saith the Lord. So it is the prayers of the Holy Ghost baptism that gives you strength. 
to pray. It gives you that motivation to pray. When you are speaking in tongues, it's a form of prayer. As I said, but you must look for a prayer point first before you speak in tongues. And God will answer you. A shout and say, Amen. Now, another motivator to pray is praying in the spirit. We saw that in Romans chapter 8, verse number 26. He said, we pray in tongues. It helps us. Man of God, open 1 Corinthians 14, verse number 18. He said, Romans chapter 8, verse number 16. I thank God for... I thank God for I speak in tongues more than you all. That was what Paul was saying. He said, I speak in tongues better than all of you. You see, tongues prayed in the spirit is an exercise. So when you are having your prayer point and you are speaking in tongues, it is a groaning in your spirit that you cannot even utter words. When Hannah came to Shiloh, she, was, she couldn't know what to say. So she started murmuring like... She was groaning in her spirit. And God sent the man of God. He said, why are you drunk? He said, I'm not drunk. It's something in my spirit, something I'm looking for. Then the man of God said, a year by this time. A year by this time you shall return here with a testimony in the name of Jesus. Oh, shout a wonderful amen. A year by this time, some of you will not be in the country, so you send your testimony through WhatsApp. Shout and say amen. Oh, shout a wonderful amen. It looks like you don't want to travel. So some of you be in Ghana and come and give your testimony here. Shout and say amen. Aha. Uh -huh. Another motivator to pray is personal testimony. Man of God, are you at 1 Corinthians 14, 18? If it's there, fine. If it's not there, let's go to Revelation 12, 11. We know that scripture. Another motivator to pray is personal testimony. Yes, he said, I thank my God because what? I speak with tongues more than you all. Paul was boasting, oh, sometimes you must boast with your gift. I love it so much. Shout and say amen. Like how we can, we can judge our father. One bishop, utmost prophet. It's, it's not pride, though. You are, you, are, you are tingling the spirit inside the man. Shout and say amen. amen. Another motivator of prayer is personal testimony. Revelation chapter 12 verse number 11. The Bible said, And they, they, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. And by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their life unto death. He said, well, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. So when you have a testimony, my God, it, it motivates you to thank God. It motivates you to do things for God. It motivates you to pray because you know that as you have gotten the first testimony, my God, you will get the next one. Shout and say amen. So I love testimonies because the testimonies makes me pray. Shout and say, Lord, give me my testimony. Now, I've seen a scripture and I saw that certain times, danger is a motivator to pray. <laughs> Sometimes dangers, problems is a motivator to pray. Because when the man of God come and say, eh, be very careful, oh. in two days time, I saw an accident. My brother, you pray. <laughs> a senior prophet called our father in the Lord and said, me who say, wait, whoa, I've seen that you are dead. Hey. He went to clear his account. Because certain dangers will motivate you to pray. Let's see something. Genesis chapter 33, verse number 1 to verse number 4. We know of the story of the return of Esau. Genesis 33, verse number 1, verse number 4. To verse number 4. And Jacob lifted up his eyes. Listen. This guy stole the blessings and ran away. I love this boy. He's very smart. And looked, and behold, Esau came with 400 men. Listen to me. Let's say you stole my phone. And I came to meet you in your house. And I was coming with 400 men. See, you ran. Jacob saw that when he lifted up his head, he saw Esau coming with 400 men. And he divided the children onto Leah. He's a very smart man. He, because of the fear, he started dividing his children. He said, you, go to Leah. You, go to Rachel. And, and onto the two mates. He was spreading them. Let's go to verse number two. We are reading four. And he put the handsmaid and their children foremost. Hey, this guy is a criminal. See what he did. His own children, he spread them with their wives. Then the children of the mates, he brought them forward. Because he knows that when the brother come, he will kill. <laughs> I love this. But let's, I want to show you something. No, please, let's go to verse number two. Let me read all. Yes. And he put the handsmaid and their children foremost, and Leah and her children after, and Rachel and Joseph hindmost, Bakra. <laughs> yes, please, let's go to number three. And he passed over before them and bowed himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. Very smart boy. After arranging them, he did physical preparation. Then he went to nail down. He had to pray seven times because he didn't know what the danger was coming with. There are certain dangers that will motivate you to pray. The Bible said, and the brother came to hug him. That's seven times. If he had not bowed down seven times to pray. Don't you think that 400 men, oh, they would have just... 
He said, and Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him and they wept. Shout and say amen. Sometimes danger becomes a motivator for you to pray. So when you see dangers, don't, don't always be binding the devil. Maybe it is a sign for you to pray. Many of you are not spiritually sharp. You are sleeping 12 o'clock. Yes, you slept well. 1 o'clock, you slept well. 2 o'clock, all of a sudden you just woke up. Then you take your phone, you are what's happening. The kind of case the demons will beat you, I don't think that case you can receive it. You see, it is, a, it is a sign that you should pray. There is something we call the devil's hour. It is at 3 a.m. Do you know why? When you sleep, automatically your body becomes just a container. So your spirit moves out of your body into its reality. We are from the spirit. So we move into eternity and we start operating. That is why you can sleep. Your body is in Ghana, but your spirit is in America. You see yourself at the ivory tower. You are in New York. It is your spirit. There is no bound of time. God created time in, the in earth realm. By eternity, there is no time. So sometimes a man of God or a prophet will see that I'm seeing you travel in Amer to America. It is done in the realms of the spirit because there is no time frame there. But the body cannot comprehend or cannot apprehend what has been given in the realms of the spirit. So it will take time for it to manifest. So when you sleep, your spirit goes into eternity and starts working. It start manifesting itself. But there is something called the devil's hour because in between 3 a.m. to 4, that is when your spirit is traveling back into your body. There the enemy intercepts. That is why people sleep and don't wake up. <laughs> so people who have, have what we call the uh, ND, uh, NDS, the near-death syndrome, you will see that most of them will tell you that I was, I don't know, my spirit left my body and I started roaming, but I couldn't enter into my body. But all of a sudden, something touched me and I woke up. Shout and say amen. So people don't understand spirituality. So if you are able to wake up even before that devil's hour with the call, but it's also a point of transitioning for we as believers, we must capitalize on it and take advantage of it. So if you are able to wake up before that time, you must program the day. Job said, have you commanded the morning? Have you put the things into its place? You are a God. You wake up, you are not commanding. He said, the sun shall not smite me by day nor the moon by night. You must put things in order as a believer. You wait and the born children will wake up at five and be commanding the moon and the star. Then you see that they are traveling over us. Then you are saying God is not blessing you. Did you do the needful? You see Jeremiah chapter 22 verse number 29 or 29, 22. The Bible said, O earth, O earth, hear the word of the Lord. Jeremiah was commanding the earth. You must command the earth that the earth must yield its best eminence for me. Shout and say amen. So danger can be a source or a motivator of prayer. Now poverty is also another motivator to pray. I love this one. It's good. Second Kings chapter 4 verse 1 to 7. We know of the story. Poverty is a motivator for you to pray. So when you don't have money, please stop binding the devil. Pray. Pray. It's, it's a motivator for you to pray. Shout and say amen. We know the story of the woman who was owing and she had to go and meet the man of God. The Bible said, Thou therefore cry a certain woman upon the wives of the sons of the prophet unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my sons, two of them as bold men. Let's go to verse number two. We are into verse number seven very quickly. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in thy house? And what the Bible said, and she said that thy housemaid has nothing, anything in the house, save a pot of oil. Verse number three, the Bible said, then he said, go, borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. I like this scripture so much. And when thou come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee, upon the sands, and thou shalt pour out all into the vessel, and thou shalt set aside which is full. Um, verse number five. So when so she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons and brought the vessels unto her. Let me cut the story. So you see that this woman, because of poverty and because they were come to take her sons, she had to run to the man of God to hear what God is saying. Poverty can make you pray. So poverty becomes a motivator for you to pray. Shout and say amen. Psalm 34, verse number six. The Bible said, The poor man cried, and the Lord heard him. And he saved him out of his trouble. So sometimes your poverty, David saw that, mm, I'm sure he was broke before, but he started crying. So he became a motivator for prayer. Farming is also a motivator. I have a lot to give you. Revival is also a motivator for you to pray. So let me give you this one and we close. The indispensability of prayer. 
the reason why you cannot deal away with prayer, the reason why prayer cannot be evicted, people have tried attacking the ministry of prayer by still extending and still existing. I saw a post of a man of God having 44.4k views and they attack attacking him. Somebody said, if it was Big Brother, will you attack him that is fake views? If it is this, will you attack him? But why when it's prayer, then they're attacking him? Let's give, give you, let me give you some few points and we just close. Number one, without prayer, we cannot communicate with God. Psalm 65 verse number two. Number two, I want you to know that we need prayer when we are weak spiritually. That is why we pray. Because you should know that we are spirit beings. Yes. He said, oh thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh. Listen to me. You can be a Buddhist or whatever. At the end of the day, when you are weak, you pray to your God. And we know that we are all connected to a God. So you still pray. So prayer is indispensable. Shout and say amen. Isaiah chapter 40 verse number 31. We need prayer when we are weak spiritually. Because I told you that your reality is the spirit world. It's your spirit being. So you need that prayer to keep you ignited. Shout and say amen. Why do we, how is it possible? Why is prayer indispensable? Number three, we, when you don't know what to do, you pray. If you don't know the clue or what to do in life, you have to pray. As that 30 verse number 21, because of time, we'll not read the scriptures. You can write them down. The indispensability of prayer number four, we need the power of prayer to wrestle against the forces of darkness. That is why we pray. Ephesians chapter 6 verse number 12. Now, without prayer, the kingdom of God cannot be established on the earth. So that is why we need prayer. Matthew chapter 6 verse number 10. Without prayer, we can easily fall into temptation. Deliver us from temptation. Shout and say amen. Thy kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yes, that is what I read. Because we pray for the establishment of the kingdom of God. Uh, Matthew chapter 26 verse number 41. We cannot fall into temptation anytime we are praying. So without prayer, you can fall into temptation. The indispensability of prayer. Why? Because we receive the fullness of joy through prayer. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. We receive the spirit of the fullness of joy through prayer. Psalm 16 verse number 11. The indispensability of prayer, we can defeat powerful enemies and destroy them with the weapon of prayer. Shout and say the weapon of prayer. Give us help from trouble for vain is the help of every man. Shout and say amen. So we defeat the enemies in prayer. Prayer brings peace in times of trouble. That is why we can't do our way to prayer. There's so many points, but because it's time for us to enter into the next service, shout and say amen. There are certain steps you need to take in order for you to pray. Number one, you must be alone with God. Genesis 32 verse number two. Matthew chapter six verse number six, pray in your closet. Number two, worship God and adore him. Let him know that you love him. Psalm 95 verse number one to seven, Revelations 4, 11. Number three, pray for mercy. These are the steps you can take to pray. Pray for mercy. First John chapter 1 verse 9 to 10. Be genuinely what? Sanctified. John chapter 17 verse number 17. Number five, receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You must also feed on the word of God if you want to be or if you want to take a step in order to pray. Feed on the word of God. When you are meditating upon the word of God, it motivates you to pray. Shout and say amen. Obey God willingly and promptly. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. And Hebrews chapter 4 verse number 16. Shout and say amen. In conclusion, I would like you to know that if God is not going to do something, regardless of whether or not we pray, then he doesn't need us to ask. But a great man of God said, God does nothing on the earth save in answer, but believers prayer. Shout and say amen. Prayer is necessary to enforce God's decision on the earth. Prayer is essentially a partnership for the redeemed child of God working hand in hand with God towards the realization of his redemptive purposes on the earth. Let us therefore rise and embrace the incredible invitation to be co-laborers with God and carriers of his awesome glory by praying without season. Shout and say amen. Now I would like you to be upstanding. As we have heard the necessity of prayer, we are closing. Let's be upstanding and repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, anoint me with the spirit of prayer right now in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray that prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, anoint me with the spirit of prayer. 
Anoint me with the spirit of prayer. Anoint me with the spirit of prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, anoint me, anoint me. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, shout a wonderful amen. amen. Say, as the Lord lives, and as the spread of the Lord lives, I shall give myself continuously to prayer for the rest of my life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Lift up your hands, let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore.